What's up? guys eric here welcome to rant and review in this video we're going to be talking about arrow season eight the final season the premiere episode titled starling city that brings back memories so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with arrow this season you have no excuse it's only one episode um, <laughs> but you've been warned uh let's go ahead and get into it so this episode was for the most part absolutely phenomenal it blew my mind like it really did uh, there are so many things in this episode. There's no way I can cover all of them here in my review. There's no way. There's so many little things in this episode. Great callbacks to just, like, honestly, if you've been a fan since the beginning, you'll know them. I don't have to call them out to you. You'll know them because they just were there right in our face. And um, there's some that I really liked. I'll talk about those a little bit in this review. But, yeah, absolutely phenomenal for the most part, except for the screeching halt that is the flash forward future scenes, which I felt like broke the episode up in a weird way. I wasn't very happy with them. Um, let's talk about that first before we get into the rest of this, because I want to get the negatives out of the way before I give this uh, episode all the positives that I have to say about it. Excuse me for hitting that there. Um, so the, the flash forward scenes just to me feel like every time we see them, it's like now, you know, it's a backdoor pilot to that, to the new series they want to do with Mia as green arrow and the canaries. So I can't look at it and just think of it as storytelling because it just feels like they're setting up this other show. Um, I'm still sort of annoyed by the John Diggle Jr., the casting and the swapping of those characters, uh, which was weird considering, you know, what happened with Legend of Tomorrow in that, in that episode in the future. Why cast the same person in a different role if you're not going to use it? You know what? I'm not even going to get into that because that was last year's rant. Uh, I'm still mad about it, though. But here's the thing. The flash forwards, um, I think, are breaking up the episodes in a weird way. I do know that they will sort of kind of pull together after a while, at least that's what the speculation is, that everything will sort of come together and it'll it'll make sense. But right now it's so disjointed and I just care about our main characters, our, our original characters from Arrow's uh, present day. Like, I don't care about the future characters at all. I don't care about Mia, I don't care about any, any of the characters that are alive in the future, uh, William, any of them. Um... So I can't get connected to that series. And honestly, I feel like that the lack of connection that I have, I also feel other people have that lack of connection as well, because in my live streams and on my videos uh, where I talk about it, most people agree that it feels like it's disjointed. They don't, they're not resonating with it. They're not connecting with it. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I feel like the CW wants the show to be a big thing. And there's just not enough people who care about these uh, future characters. Plus, it almost, in my opinion, tarnishes the concept of Green Arrow by passing the torch on to a, an unlikable character right now. Sort of like, I think, was it season six? Where Diggle, it was either five or six, I have to go back and look, I can't remember, where Diggle was Green Arrow for like seven episodes. No, it was it was last season, right? I think it was last season. I You know, I don't remember. Anyway... Diggle was a likable character and people would, most people didn't like him as Green Arrow. So you're taking a character that really no one that I've talked to likes and giving them the mantle of Green Arrow. So it's going to be even worse. It's going to be so much more blowback on it. And the whole Deathstroke gang and stuff and everything. Like, I just, I can't with the flash forwards. I cannot. They just annoy me to no end and they take all the steam out of the momentum of the episode. That's really my only negative here. That is the only negative from this premiere. So by now you can already tell this, in my opinion, was the best premiere of all of them. Um, but yeah, that, that flash forwards. Okay, enough. Let's, let's stop talking about that. So at the start of the episode, I was very confused because I didn't know if we were seeing like another Earth's view of Oliver Queen and how he became the Green Arrow or didn't become the Green Arrow. We got the Batman thing on the, on Leanne Yu, which I thought was cool. Total fan service, just a nod to us. Don't read too much into it. I, I don't think it really matters. It's just Arrow's always been compared to Batman or the show Arrow in terms of the structure of the show, the characters, the storylines, things like that. So I think that was sort of just a little fun poke at the bear, I guess you could say. Uh, again, don't read too much into that. So uh, we, we end up finding out that it is our Oliver, and he's on Earth 2, and... A lot of people were assuming that the Earth 2 Green Arrow was going to be his father because of some stuff that happened um, a few seasons back on The Flash. However, we find out that the Earth 2 Green Arrow is actually Simon Morrison, Adrian Chase, Prometheus. Uh, he's running around as a Green Arrow in what looks to be the new Green Arrow suit, the one that we uh, saw in the promo shot. So it looks like Oliver was using that suit to go to Earth 2, 
at, at least that's my speculation, so that he would blend in. Um, but it is Prometheus. He's running around as the Green Arrow, which I thought was kind of fun. But it's, it was weird because, you know, you're used to him being a jerk, being this, like, crazy person. And, and so he just, him being Green Arrow was such a weird change to me. But, I don't know, it worked, I guess. And we're following up on a bad guy. And so uh, we're trying to figure out who this bad guy is. And we see a lot of people from earlier seasons we've got malcolm merlin we've got uh merlin merling merlin we got tommy merlin we've got uh maura queen and we find out that thea is uh deceased in this on this earth and it happened while oliver was away uh on lian yu so everybody's sort of reeling from that and so you feel the emotion from that uh with our characters and it what it's what drives Tommy to do what he does in this episode and that is become the dark archer which Oliver comes over thinking he knows everything this reminds me of like when Sherlock came over on the flash and said that he knew who uh Cicada was and it ended up being someone else it was very similar in here where Oliver acted like he knew the dark archer was Malcolm Merlin it actually ended up being Tommy Merlin and so we got that fan moment where everybody wanted Tommy to be the dark archer. They like, I remember back in the earlier seasons, it was a big thing. Everybody really wanted that as time went on. They wanted him to come back as a dark archer from another earth. And, um, so we finally got it this season and it was great. It wasn't like this quick thing. Like it really was a driving force in the back half of the episode. So I thought that was very interesting and cool. We got to see Dinah and Renee sort of helping with this, uh, underhanded, um, un I guess undertaking is the best way to put it with the city and them getting arrested and then getting beat up. It's just, it's funny because those two characters have always been like, I could take them or leave them honestly. So <laughs> it's crazy. We also find out that the Diggle on this or, or on earth two is actually our John Diggle from earth one. And so he's kind of sort of being, uh, I guess an angel or a devil on the shoulder of Oliver queen while he's over here doing what he's doing where the monitor being the opposite. I guess it just depends on perspective. So he's over there and we find out he used one of the devices that Cisco made to travel to Earth 2. And so, yeah, uh, I thought that was interesting. At first, I, it kind of irked me a little bit because I'm like, uh, but then I thought, well, you know what? This is good because then it doesn't, Oliver doesn't actually have to do what he would normally do um, with ditching Diggle. So I thought that was kind of fun that it was our Diggle. And plus, it's always nice to have another character to share those things with. But we spent like the entire episode on Earth 2. And we get to see, like, the dynamics of Earth 2. We find out that uh, Black Siren is now the Black Canary of Earth 2, running around with uh, Prometheus, or <laughs> Green Arrow, and, you know, doing what our Team Arrow does on Earth 1, except there. And so I thought that was kind of fun. And then we get to the end of the episode. Again, there's a lot of things. Let me make sure uh, there's nothing else I want to talk about here. I mean, they're about this stuff before I jump into my final thoughts. So we get to the end of the episode and we see exactly what the anti-monitor is doing. He is basically using antimatter to remove these earths from the, the multiverse. So, or at least that's the way it seems on the show. Like it's not exactly the same as the comics. It's close, but not exactly the same anyway. So that's what he's doing. And we get to see our characters get absorbed by the antimatter, including uh, Oliver's mother, Tommy, um, lots of the other characters there. Uh, pretty much everybody except for Laurel, who escapes with them back to Earth-1, Diggle and, and Oliver. So this is how Laurel is going to survive beyond Crisis and why we see her in the future in Star City is because she's actually going to be living on Earth-1 now because I don't think we're ever going to see Earth-2 again. I think Earth-2 is gone. RIP Earth-2. Uh, as Paige would say, F's in the chat for Earth-2. Uh, so that's how the, the episode wraps up. And honestly, I, I loved it. I do have a few questions, though. Uh, we see Laurel using guns at some point in the episode. I didn't really understand why. There's a lot of people in the live stream are saying, oh, it's because she didn't want to scream and hurt people's ears. I, no, not buying that. Um, so <laughs> that was kind of weird. Um, now, why does the monitor need Oliver? That's the big question. People talk about the deal, about things like that. There was a theory, I believe, in the live stream and that the that the monitor is unable to um, do these tasks because the anti-monitor would be able to track him, which is why he was able to destroy Earth 2, because that's where the monitor was, you know, right before that happened. So there's a theory that, you know, that's why he can't interfere. And, uh, you know, I guess that's probably the best theory, because I can't really see, see any reasons why I would need Oliver or Barry to do stuff. 
uh, to stop the Anti-Monitor when he has access to so much power. I mean, stop him as in whatever he's trying to assemble, because they're looking for things to create some sort of, uh, I guess, a device to stop this uh, collision of the multiverse. So, because Oliver was there looking for Dwarf Star material, which I believe they said this was the only Earth that it was available on anymore. So that was kind of interesting. But it's weird, though, because the Monitor shouldn't be restricted to just the Earth. Like, the Monitor should be able to go anywhere in the universe he wants to go, I think. So, we still don't know the real reason. I'm going to assume we're going to find out why. Uh, so, yeah, and the consuming of the Earth, uh, or of Earth 2, was sad, and so brought a little tear to my eye there at the end. But overall, I really, really enjoyed this episode of Arrow. Again, best season premiere easily for this season. One of the best season premieres for Arrow ever, but I expected nothing less. I have a feeling every episode this season, unless there's one that's just really bad, <laughs> every episode this season is going to feel like a premiere or a finale because they're just going to be so full of great things. And so, oh, and there was also a line in this episode where um, Oliver was talking to Prometheus as a Green Arrow, and he said, he said something about uh, how would Oliver know um, whatever it was they were talking about in the bunker, and he goes, maybe it's because I'm 10 steps ahead. And so that was kind of fun for us to sort of get a little uh, fan service there from him talking to Prometheus after everything they've been through on Earth One. I will say it is a little unbelievable that he wasn't more, I guess, upset with Adrian, even though this Adrian wasn't the same one. I can imagine that the feelings of anger towards him for what he did on Earth One should have still been there, but we didn't really get that. Honestly, we didn't have a lot of time to cover that because so much happened in this episode. So maybe they just did not have time to uh to get to that. Anyway, that's pretty much it for my review, guys. Let me give my score. I'm gonna say sans the uh you know the future scenes and a couple little issues in the episode like the like Laurel using guns instead of her scream and the monitor's, um, you know, objectives being unclear to me. I guess I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And I'm not giving out scores lightly this year. This is this could have been, in my opinion, a perfect episode. Honestly, this, the little things that I have questions about uh, in the present day would have been insignificant had the future scenes not happened. And I probably would have gave it a much higher score, either a 9.5 or maybe even a 10. But the future scenes, just I can't overlook them, and they're just annoying. And so with that being said, I, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. A whole point for the future scenes, unfortunately. So uh, go up in the corner here, somewhere over here, and let me know if you agree or disagree with my score. And then go down to the comments below and give me your thoughts and opinions on this episode. What did you think of this? Were you expecting Earth 2 to be gone so quickly? Uh, what did you think of all the characters on Earth 2, like our, our characters on Earth 2 that we hadn't seen before? And what about your thoughts on um, Robert Queen not being the Hood or the Green Arrow? And that thing, like, that was sort of a soft retcon, I guess, or maybe something changed in the timeline on Earth 2. So, anyway, give me all your thoughts and opinions. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, because I do live streams every week, and I make videos uh, during the week about our favorite Arrowverse shows. And uh, you want to know when I'm putting stuff up, so hit that notification bell. Become part of the Eric first. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video, and definitely leave a comment below. That's all I got for you guys in this video. I will catch you in the next one. See you then.